Uh, we'd like to welcome our next act. Uh, we first met him on the first Joko Cruise Crazy. He was part of the uh, Minneapolis Mafia. Uh, that, those being our friends uh, Bill Corbett and Kevin Murphy from MST3K and Riff Tracks. He was absolutely hilarious. He is the author and co-author of a number of awesome plays. His very first book, Comedy of Doom, just came out recently and is available tonight. Here, for your listening pleasure and viewing entertainment, the sexy, the svelte, the gorgeous, the wonderful, Joseph Scrimshaw. Thank you all very much. Um, how many of you in this audience, by applause, spend a lot of time on Twitter? <laughs> Wonderful. And how many of you feel you are intimately familiar with the plot of Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope? <laughs> I share these obsessions with you, uh, so I wanted to kind of smash them together. So what I've done is I've written out the plot of A New Hope as it would be communicated by the Twitter feed of the main characters. Please enjoy. <clears throat> Tweet from Luke Skywalker. Just looked at twin sons and daydreamed about having an epic destiny. Eyes hurt. Need to stop looking directly into twin sons. <laughs> LOL. Tweet from Princess Leia to Obi-Wan Kenobi. I need your help blowing up the Death Star. Tweet from Princess Leia to Obi-Wan Kenobi. Shit, that was supposed to be a direct message. Shit. <laughs> Tweet from Darth Vader. About to retrieve stolen Death Star plans and get my evil on. Sent from my Verizon chest unit. <laughs> Tweet from manager of General Goods Store in Toshi Station. Luke, your power converters are in. Are you going to pick them up? Tweet from C-3PO. I am C-3PO. This is my first tweet. Oh my, I'm not sure I get how this works. Ha ha. I understand there is a limit on the number of care. <laughs> tweet from old Ben Kenobi to Luke Skywalker. I think I just called you. I didn't mean to. I had my phone in my robes and I accidentally force-styled you. <laughs> Reply from Luke Skywalker. LOL. Wait. What is the force? <laughs> Reply from old Ben Kenobi. It's a mystical energy field that binds and penetrates everybody. That didn't come out right. <laughs> come to my hut. <laughs> Tweet from Imperial Stormtroopers. Tatooine peeps, we're looking for these droids. They're kind of like Laurel and Hardy, but gay. <laughs> Please retweet. Tweet from Han Solo. Han Solo just checked into the cantina on Foursquare. <laughs> Tweet from Chewbacca. Roar, smiley face. <laughs> Tweet from Han Solo. I just shot Greedo. He didn't even have a chance to get off a shot. If anyone tells you he shot first, they're fucking liars. <laughs> Tweet from Darth Vader. So I blew up Alderaan. A little bummed about being so mean to Princess Leia. She looks and acts just like my dead wife. <laughs> it can't be too soon because it happened a long time ago. Second tweet from Darth Vader. And she's about the right age to be my daughter. Maybe I should look into that. <laughs> Screw it. Sent from my Verizon meditation chamber. <laughs> tweet from Han Solo. Alderaan is not here. Google Maps can suck my Corellian ass. <laughs> tweet from manager of General Goods Store in Tashi Station. Seriously, Luke, your power converters are in. Are you going to pick them up? Reply from Luke Skywalker. Can't. Busy. Being sucked into giant armadillo space station. <laughs> Tweet from Luke Skywalker. Sorry, meant armored space station. <laughs> Stupid fucking autocorrect. <laughs> Tweet from Han Solo. Hey, at Emperor underscore Palpatine. I'm in your space station shooting your dudes. Tweet from Darth Vader, about to fight Obi-Wan. Last time we were spinning through the air and shit, 
Now we look like 80 year olds doing a polka with glow sticks. Sad. Tweet from General Dodonna of the Rebel Alliance. Time it took the Empire to build the Death Star, 19 years. Time it took the Rebel Alliance to find fatal flaw, two minutes. Hashtag fail. Tweet from Luke Skywalker. Flying around trying to blow up a space station before it kills everyone? Probably shouldn't be tweeting right now. <laughs> Tweet from Darth Vader. Flying in my spaceship, shooting down rebels. Could have stayed at home and choked the pilots with my mind. WTF. <laughs> Sent from my Verizon twin ion engine advanced X1 prototype starship. Tweet from Luke Skywalker. Proton torpedoes in the exhaust port shaft with the force for the win! <laughs> Tweet from Princess Leia. About to give the guys medals for blowing up the Death Star. Not giving one to Chewbacca. Kind of feel like a bitch about that. <laughs> oh well. Tweet from Chewbacca. Ruar, sad face. Tweet from Luke Skywalker. Drank milk, met new friends, killed millions of Imperials on the Death Star, used the Force. Pretty epic day for a farm boy. Tweet from manager of General Goods Store in Tashi Station. Luke, we sold your power converters to someone else. Thanks for being a really shitty customer, Skywalker. And that is Star Wars Tweets. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, I'd like to tell you a very brief story about uh, being a stubborn person. I'm very stubborn, and like all stubborn people, I'm very stubborn about admitting that I'm stubborn, but sometimes reality just gets right up in your face and you cannot possibly ignore it. A couple of years ago, I was leaving the house, and my wife stopped me and said, remember to listen to your wife head. And when my wife says wife head, she means I should imagine that there is a tiny, fairy-like version of her perched on my shoulder who says things like, has it ever really worked out well for anyone to switch from drinking beer to tequila at 1.30 a.m.? <laughs> when my wife first described wife head to me, I asked her if it was like a devil and angel thing, and she said, no. Wife head doesn't judge. She just wants you to be safe. So on this particular day when my wife said, remember to listen to your wife head, and I said, yes, of course I will, I was lying. Later that day, I would do something terribly dangerous for almost no reason. I was acting in some commercials for a friend. Uh, the commercials were advertising replacement parts for photocopiers. My co-stars in the commercial would be a few friends, a photocopier, a cougar, and a bear. And I do not mean cougar and bear in any of their current cultural context. I mean the actual animal is a cougar and a bear. The director of the commercials had located some guy in the woods who kept animals and claimed to be a professional. This professional guy in the woods insisted that his cougar and bear were trained actors. The animals were trained actors in that they did not immediately kill their co-stars on sight. They only considered it just like real actors do. Our first shot called for a cougar to chase us. You know, to advertise replacement parts for a photocopier. Of course, we couldn't actually be chased by the cougar because the cougar would catch us. So we just needed a shot of the cougar running. So they set up the shot and the cougar was taken off her leash and the cougar paced. And the professional guy in the woods went about 30 feet away and started dancing around and shaking his ass and teasing the cougar like it was a small house cat. The cougar stared at him like he was an idiot and then suddenly pounced. And the professional guy, the man in charge of our safety, reacted by yelling, Oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> and diving behind a tree. We somehow escaped the cougar without injury, but then it was time to shoot with the fully grown black bear. Now, if this black bear was a trained actor, she was a very difficult actor with a great union, because she took a break whenever the fuck she wanted. <laughs> The only means of control the professional had over the bear was by feeding her treats. Specifically, gummy bears. Little sugar-filled gelatin images of herself. 
and shot after shot, the bear would not stand where he wanted, so the professional would give her gummy bears to try to get her to hold still, and it didn't work. He was just rewarding her for her failure. It was maddening. Eight hours later, we set up the final shot, which was me playing chess with a bear. You know, to advertise replacement parts for photocopiers. <laughs> the bear did not want to sit at this bench and pretend to play chess with me, so the gummy bears kept being put closer and closer to me. They were on the bench, then they were on the table, then they were on the chess set, then they were in my hand. We could not get a single shot of a bear sitting at the table. Professional guy lost it and said, fine, here's how we're gonna do it. You hold the gummy bear between your teeth and the bear will stare at you. At this point, I just wanted to go home, so I said, fine. And I put the gummy bear between my teeth and the bear leaned its big bear face in and nibbled it out. I could feel its teeth grazing my lips. And we do this two more times with the exact same result. So I asked the director if we got the shot and he said, no. We, we need a shot of a bear looking at you and what we have is a shot of a bear eating out of your mouth. It's good footage, it's really, it's really good footage. Uh, but we should try it one more time. So I put the gummy bear between my teeth. The bear came in close, and as its massive head leaned in, for some reason, in that instant, I decided the bear does not deserve this treat. <laughs> I've been working hard all day, and I haven't got a single goddamn gummy bear. <laughs> this one is mine. So I pulled the gummy bear away from my teeth and deep back into my throat. And the bear pressed her mouth against mine and then jammed her tongue into my mouth. <laughs> Began to fish around looking for the gummy bear. At which point, wife head appeared on my shoulder. <laughs> wife head said, um, sweetie, uh, not, I'm not judging, uh, I'm not judging. I'm just wondering, why are you French kissing a bear? <laughs> so I released the gummy bear and the bear sucked it out of my mouth and just fucked off into the woods. <laughs> Did not offer to call or buy me dinner or anything. So I got home and I was totally honest, I told my wife about the whole thing and she was shocked and alarmed. I said, the bear could have mauled your face off. And I said, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think about that. <laughs> Just felt really strongly in that moment that the bear did not deserve that gummy bear. <laughs> this incident forced me to accept that I'm perhaps more stubborn than I thought. It also helped me set a new low bar for poor decision making. So when I'm out in the world and I'm about to do something stubborn and stupid for no reason, not only do I hear Wifehead speaking to me, I hear Wifehead sighing and saying, well, at least it's not as stupid as making out with a bear. <laughs> Thank you very much.